Hi, everyone. It's Andrew with The Market Mindset. Uh, today, we're catching up with First Phosphate. I love speaking with John Pasolacqua. You've had a busy day today because I was watching you early this morning on the benchmark uh, phosphate debate. Uh, and it was about our LFP supply chain's position to meet the EV ambitions. It was a great uh, talk. I'm going to do a little write-up on that. We've got a lot we want to cover in, in a short period of time because uh, you guys have accomplished a ton in 2023. I'll get into that. But first, tell me, how did the panel go? What did you, what did you take from that benchmark uh, Zoom call? Yeah, no, I think it went really well. I think uh, everybody on the panel was, it was a great pan panel. Everybody um, basically, you know, um, uh, complimented each other. And, um, you know, we had some people from sort of the resource side, which was our side um, to start. And then you had some people from, you know, making the purified phosphoric acid side and others who were really deep into the LFP side. Um, and so, you know, it was just a very good way to um, get everybody together and kind of um, try to make some sense of the whole LFP supply chain in North America. What is it going to look like when it comes to uh, North America? And um, I think I think the, the, the panel gelled really well. Yeah, it was very insightful because it, it it did bring in each kind of step of the way. And uh, I guess that's a good way for me to kind of segue into all the steps you've assembled. And I'm going to miss a couple, but, uh, you know, right off the bat, I mean, you listed in 2023 and you came out of the gate like swinging <laughs> with that MOU with Prayon, uh, which was huge. And of course, the, the Queen's LFP uh, suitability uh, study that you finished moved right along, you know, working on local community partnerships. Uh, you you started working on uh, Bejan Lamarche as well. You got your pilot plant done as well a little bit later on, and then the MOU with Norfolco, which is also big news. Uh, you also then went on to finish the PEA uh, as well as an MOU with American Battery Factory, and of course the uh, you know doing the purified phosphoric acid pilot testing. Uh, you got the LOI for 170 million of financing from Axum Bank USA. Now, once again, lots of little steps in between there and, and other things I may have missed, but a lot has happened in a very, very short period of time on anybody's scale, uh, for any company, not ever mind mining. Well, yeah, th thank you. Thank you for that, Andrew. I think it's important, uh, you know, for uh, for us to realize that, you know, electrification is happening and um, it's happening by a certain date. That's when raw materials have to be provided. So, I mean, we realize that and we're just moving as quickly as, as we can um, you know, to to be able to get into production, to be able to have uh, you know all three uh, levels of our of our supply chain uh, ready by by uh, you know a certain certain date, and uh, the sooner the better. Yeah, and we talked too. Like it's frustrating the types of markets out there right now, but you guys have I mean a lot of blue sky here. Once the the LOI, like once you can get that kind of more more solidified, confirmed, whatever T's and you know cross T's and whatnot that are needed there, uh, it's still frustrating when you see a market because you you know it's like who's missing. Uh, that this isn't happening. Like, I mean, all these battery plants are being announced in Canada, in Europe. Uh, let's not even talk about China, uh, all across the US. And a lot of them are looking specifically for uh, that high grade phosphate. And I know that, you know, it was even talked this morning was someone might just off the case go, oh, well, Nutrien. I mean, they've got phosphate. They've got tons of phosphate. I can just use that. Uh, they don't realize that it's it's that next step you have to take, and then the next couple couple steps after that too, which you know they 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 won't have the 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 supply to meet that demand by any right stretch. Yeah, I think it's it's this it's the same old story of of all the of all the minerals um, and all the uh, battery materials is you know it, it, they require a very high level of purification and it's no different than uh, um, phosphate and phosphoric acid. You really need to start with a very clean uh, input source, uh, such as we have the igneous rock in Saguenay Lake Saint Jean, Quebec, and then it's about purifying that 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 rock uh, to purified phosphoric acid. And only at that point can you say, okay, now I've got purified phosphoric acid that can enter the battery supply chain. So yeah, that's that was a big thing on our panel today too. Was you know the difference between the rocks. First, you have to have the right rock. Then having the right rock, it's it's got to be extracted. It's got to be processed. Um, to the proper uh, level of uh, purity to make purified phosphoric acid. And it goes without saying, Quebec, I've talked about Quebec so many times. I mean, you're going to have hydropower, uh, likely. It's a very green province. There's lots of green uh, uh, credits as well, but they're 100% behind uh, the entire initiative. I mean, there, if there's one pro province that really stands out, it's Quebec. That also just, you know, it's, it's very handy if your project's in Quebec uh, because they're really on board uh, to make things happen. Yeah, no, that's true. I just come, got back from the Quebec uh, Mind Show that we were invited out to to speak at last uh, last week in Quebec City, and 
it's true. The, the whole ecosystem is quite developed in Quebec, and uh, it's nice to see the way all the different branches of government uh, work together and um, towards, you know, a, a, a proper plan um, to, 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 to make Quebec really the, the single largest uh, um, electrification hub in North America. Like, it's just so forward looking what they're doing out there. So really happy and really proud to be uh, working in Quebec for sure. Before I jump into like what's what's what should we look forward for 2024 or what can we talk about? <laughs> is we we were talking a little bit as well about the, you know, especially when things get tough, people's timelines kind of they 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 jump back to very, very short. Uh, and you know, I've been reiterating to people like, listen, these are long-term projects, and you want them to be because there's stored up value in there. And you know, if you take that kind of step back and look at okay, what have they achieved? What have they done? whatever the price is in the market, it, it can be up, it can be down. But as long as the management is doing what they're saying they're going to do, and you can see this macro outlook, especially in Canada, with how much is being put towards this electrification, and especially for the battery side, uh, it just it makes so much sense if people can get out of that short term kind of fear, like, oh, what's happening in the market? What's happening here? There's elections, there's this, there's that. And just kind of go, listen, I've got a long term look. Uh, this, you know, there's a demand for years to come. Uh, and that uh, if if we've got the right team in the right management that continue to hit what they're supposed to do, that value will be attained at some point, whether it's six months, six years. Yeah, I think I think you're right about that, Andrew. I think you know um, we've had a lot of industries in the Canadian capital markets that have sort of come and and went and um, you know are still there embryonically. But when you look at something like electrification, look at something like critical minerals. Um, the reason that you know we we chose to be in this space and that I'm here heading up this company is because. Um, I feel that, you know, this is really one of the the longer um, decade long secular ki kind of trends um, that, you know, when, you, when you're talking electrification, they're talking 2040, 2030, 2050. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean that that's when it starts. It means that that's, you know, the runway that you're on. And it's something that we're looking out to way until 2100. So the big businesses of the future that are going to be able to, um, you know, um, take advantage of that trajectory are the ones that are started now. And yes, it is a little bit of a difficult time right now financially and, uh, you know, with interest rates and inflation and all the geopolitical and uh, social uncertainties and economic uncertainties. But, you know, it's it's never a better time, I think, to start a business during a, a difficult time because you start off on, you know, with some good habits, right? Absolutely. And also, I mean, it, it doesn't if, if someone's new and they're looking, have this stock down at where it is for the value you're getting. Uh, and I, I don't I can't talk too much about pricing and, and whatnot, but uh, it, you're in a very good position for the amount of work that you've done uh, to date. And if someone has a longer term time frame, but I know because we have to talk about it, people always want to ask, what's the short term stuff? So what, what should someone be looking forward to that we can talk about uh, for 2024? Yeah, so I think we've telegraphed to the market already. We and we we mentioned it in our our June um, uh, 2023 update, corporate update, that we would be uh, working towards purifying our phosphate into purified phosphoric acid. So we've already done the step one of that. We've gotten to merchant grade phosphoric acid, and now we're just waiting on results on a uh, on getting up to purified phosphoric acid, and that should be forthcoming in, in the next few weeks. It's either going to be just before Christmas or just after, as we telegraphed. And um, after that, then, you know, we will have samples of purified phosphoric acid to send out to some of the, um, you know, potential customers that we're under MOU with. Um, so that's probably our, you know, the, the biggest thing that we're looking forward to, uh, in, in uh, you know, the end of this year. And next year, obviously, it's, you know, selecting our, doing a little bit more drilling, so right, selecting the site of where the mine will be, and then, you know, starting very, very hard on, on a, either a PEA or a feasibility study. We have a PEA on one of our properties. Another property that's voting really well, we'd have to do a little bit more drilling. Then we'll, we'll be in a position to know, um, you know, where the feasibility start, study is going to start. Um, so we're we're very we're we're very you know um, getting much more directional with the company, understanding um, exactly where the um, where, where the future trajectory of it will be. Excellent. Well, listen, I know you've got a million other calls to do. And I wanted just to be able to grab you. Talk about some of the successes you've had this year, and also you know look look forward to a few of these things in the near future as well. And uh, like I said, I, I, we couldn't be happier with the amount of work and what has been accomplished so far. And at the end of the day, that's how we look at milestones. And uh, we wish you all the best for the end of the year and and end of 2023. And we look forward to seeing these these results in 2024. Right, that's great, Andrew. Thank you so much for your time. All the best uh, to you and your family. Take Christmas care. Christmas in the new year. Thank you. Excellent. Bye bye. Thanks so much, John.